are gonna get crazy! <laughs> Most everyone's mad. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. How are we all doing today? I hope you all had a, a wonderful time uh, in this past week. And I, all, and, and I do hope that you all had a wonderful weekend because I know I certainly had a great time and a, a very eventful one as well. Uh, for the first time, I managed to uh, cut down a tree yeah. or I helped cutting down a tree considering that it was a casualty from the ice storm. So it was already dead and it had to go anyways because it was like very slanted. Uh, but then also yesterday I was out with my friends and we just had like a day filled adventure. I actually watched uh, Suzume, uh, which was actually a very nice movie. I don't find it to be as good as Weathering With You because I adore that film, but still like very top notch right there. Uh, yeah! And then like we had a nice stroll downtown. And by the way, thank you for the subscriptions there. Uh, very nice of you all. Uh, so, uh, de definitely keep that going. That's always nice. Uh, but anyways, I also took a stroll downtown and also, uh, we did some karaoke. So maybe there is a chance that maybe my voice isn't as strong as it was before, because let me tell you, I used it a lot last night through karaoke and yes, drinks were involved. But anyways, uh, I definitely had a great time and I want to continue yeah, having a good yeah. time this time with this podcast and man more subscriptions uh thank you jay monty and thank you uh jonathan for uh those additional subscriptions they're definitely awesome of you all but anyways uh yes like i said uh there's definitely gonna be a bunch of top stories that we are gonna be covering and a whole lot of trailers that we are gonna be watching in fact i would say that this will be a little bit like a spiritual successor from what we had last week You'll find some similar stories, and of course, we are going to look into a whole bunch of different trailers. So, strap yourselves in, because we are going to be in for another wild ride. So, I would like to go and ask the chat wall now, are you all ready for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? Now, let me hear it, folks. Are you ready? Let's see now. Are people ready? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I do see people are all prepared. That is wonderful yeah, to yeah. see. Oh, even Daniel is ready for it. And already a hype train has activated. Awesome, dudes. All right. So let's go and continue this. And we are off to a wonderful start. So with all that said and done, it is now time that we shall go and get things started. And with our first story that we have for you today, well, it's going to be an update from last week's story in regards to the box office results of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now, last time I discussed about it, it was off to a tremendous start, so much so that in some cases it was actually record breaking, including one of them in which uh, I haven't fully discussed about it, but it was um, now I think we can pretty much officially say that after its opening weekend, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie has the highest grossing, uh, well, has the, yeah, 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 that, that's it. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie has the highest grossing opening weekend ever for an animated movie in terms of the global box office in which it broke the record from Frozen 2 back in the end of 2019. But now there are more records that it has managed to go and break. So let's go and start things off by introducing to the new record that the Super Mario Brothers movie got, which is the highest grossing movie based on a video game. Yes, last week it made it official. In fact, it was only a little over a week that it managed to go and break that record in which it has officially crossed the half a billion dollar mark in the global box office, which from there, 
it managed to secure that record for being the highest grossing movie based on a video game of all time, uh, surpassing other features such as Warcraft and Pokemon Detective Pikachu. So Mario did finally manage to go and take the crown on that. And so far, how it's performing at the box office, it is still doing tremendously well. In fact, if we do look into how things are, are actually, you know what? I just found this uh, new article on top uh, from my source on Variety. Uh, I believe they just put this one out or uh, they put this out a few hours ago uh, in which they stated that on its second weekend, it managed to go and collect $92 million. Very impressive for a second weekend. In fact, if you look into the first weekend, technically, if you only count like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, I believe Mario managed to do $146 million? Uh, That is like uh, give or take. Uh, like if that does count uh, the like two, the third uh, Wednesday and Thursday, but still though, the fact that it did make ninety two million dollars on its second weekend is massively impressive. In fact, it managed to surpass the expectations of what people were thinking that it would do at the box office for this weekend. But anyways, now if we go into my source on Box Office Mojo, as I am recording this right now. The Super Mario Brothers movie has managed to collect a domestic total of $347.8 million, an international total of $330.1 million, and a worldwide total of $678 million. So already, this is just on week two for the Super Mario Brothers movie, and already you could see that it, it is still accumulating some tremendous results. Now, as you probably know, like if you have seen last week's episode, I've already discussed about why is it that the Super Mario Brothers movie is dominating at the box office and how it did manage to get a tremendous start. And from there, I talked extensively in regards to the masterful marketing in which Illumination collaborated with Nintendo on doing, especially with all the Nintendo Directs. And also, I have discussed about the fact that it was done by Illumination Entertainment. And on that factor alone, with the fact that they are more like uh, crowd pleasers, that they aim to please more the audience, more so than the critics, and the fact that... Um, uh, you, you, and, and the fact that Illumination does have that reputation that audiences can actually trust because of how audiences really connected with films such as the Despicable Me movies, the Minion movies, uh, Sing, The Secret Life of Pets, and others. They've all th th like that already plays a significant factor into why we are seeing uh, this box office titan. And even right now, not only. Did, Mar did Mario manage to secure becoming the highest grossing movie of all time based on a video game? But also, it, it currently has the title of the highest grossing movie of 2023. So already, it's going to set itself a massively high standard that it's going to be tough to beat. But then again, uh, the summer movies are going to be pretty promising, so... We will see how things go. Maybe we are going to see uh, another movie manage to go and dethrone Mario, but hold on a sec now. We are still in the spring, so let's just be patient and just relish the moment of what we are witnessing with the Super Mario Brothers movie. So there are definitely all those factors that are going on and still amazing to see but like these records again and again that they are just breaking just from Mario alone and already like in terms of the video game based movies like we have already seen a progression in terms of audiences connecting with not just movies but TV shows that are based on video games but especially I would say like it started in 2019 and then really escalated from there where we start to see films like Pokemon Detective Pikachu then the Sonic the Hedgehog movies then you got The Last of Us and I mean yeah sure there might have been a few that like 
were pretty bad like they you know they still portrayed that video game movie curse such as uh 2021's mortal Kombat or that uncharted movie but we are seeing a bit of progress in terms of the quality of video game based content or video game based movies or tv shows from hollywood and that more and more people are connecting with them in which i i guess you could say that with those films, they also play a significant factor into why we are seeing the Mario movie getting so much success and getting so much positive attention is because audiences are starting to trust content that is based on video games. Now people, now people have a reassurance that they can be good, that there is some quality, and that they can be entertaining and also be respectful to the original source material that they love. And that's exactly what we are seeing here with the Mario movie. So in a way, some people could say, yeah, it is because of Detective Pikachu and the Sonic the Hedgehog films that they have played a factor to go and help Mario out for people to trust Illumination to make the film and to actually have a moment to go and enjoy it because debatably without it, people would end up becoming a lot more cynical, both in terms of the fact that it is from Illumination and from the fact that it is based on a video game and people would suddenly get like these PTSD-like flashbacks of the uh, 1993 film with John Leguizamo and Bob Hoskins and people would think like, oh, this is no different than that piece of garbage and whatever. So that trust factor definitely played a role there. But then there are also two additional reasons that I would like to go and input onto this, why we are still seeing like this tremendous success. And it kind of did evolve like the more you, you know, like as time moved on, uh, we do see more and more of this prominence happening. Like number one, uh we uh like one factor is in terms of positive word of mouth now i know there have been some people who did mention this before like in the last episode some people in the chat wall mentioned that but now more than ever uh it really is a positive word of mouth in which people are starting to more and more discuss about this movie and so far the grand majority of it has been positive now i know that you know, there's been a bit of a disconnect between what audiences say and what critics say, because if you do go to Rotten Tomatoes, you'll find that the Mario movie doesn't necessarily have a great score. Like it is like it is very, very close to actually getting that fresh rating, but like not but it's not by much like it's stuck in that limbo of like 57, 58 or 59 percent. And I mean, as a Rotten Tomatoes critic, I'm trying like I'm trying to contribute to help things out. I did give it a fresh rating, just letting you know. But um, from there, they but even though like it has a like a mostly negative score in which most people would probably be turned off by that, the disconnect from with audiences like it's at the point where they just don't care. It's it ended up becoming one of those episodes in which people gave backlash to Rotten Tomatoes for not giving it a positive number, that the number is not as high as they would go and like to see. So it, it pretty much results in people trusting more on what their friends would go and say, more so than what critics like myself would go and say, that it's a movie that is a lot of fun, that it is enjoyable. And I mean, like, People, you know, and like, even though it's not a great movie, I've already said my criticisms about it. Like, yeah, the writing is weak and Chris Pratt was still a terrible choice to play as Mario. But people are not going in to go and um, people people aren't going in to go and see a great movie. Like I said before, this movie is not meant to be great. It's meant to give people a great time. And in that regard, that's why people are not really paying attention to what the critics would have to say, because they're not the judges of what's going to give you a great time. They're only there to judge the movie itself. If they want to know how the movie is in terms of it being fun, then it really is a case of just asking the audience. They ask their friends if they have seen it, and they would get the feedback from them, and that is when they get their signal to go and actually watch it. In fact, uh, I would even say that 
it also has a factor of rewatchability. Like on its opening weekend, as I said before, I've already seen it twice. And it really is a, a case where, well, since it is based on Mario, it is very similar to something like Mario Party or Mario Kart. It's the kind of party movie that you go and watch with friends. And the more that you are, the better that the experience is because you can share the experience. You could share uh, the moments with your friends as you go and see like all the craziness that is happening and all the imagination that just bursts out and like all the recreations that were from the games now brought onto the big screen. It really is one of those movies that it's made for the audience. Like, yeah, you're not going to see it be nominated for Oscars or whatever. You're not going to see it be like a, a massive awards contender or anything like that. But people aren't there to go and see that. They just want to go there to have a good time and to see what they've played in the games be adapted onto the big screen. And Illumination has managed to deliver that well. And because they managed to deliver that well, that's where the positive word of mouth go comes in. That's where people would go and share their thoughts on social media, give it all the positive things that they could go and say about it. And just really like, well, they just want to go and share the wealth and just share the fact that they had a great time. So a positive word of mouth is definitely a prominent example as to what we are witnessing here. And then there is one other thing that I want to go and mention. And uh, I, I think all of you probably know what this is. It's the Peaches song. Yes, I would even say that the Peaches song did play a very significant factor into the fact that this has become a massive box office success. Why is that? Because the Peaches song is now a massive viral meme. And whenever there is something from a movie that becomes a viral meme, then it pretty much becomes this endless cycle of success for the feature itself. Now, I know some people would argue that not all memes can go and make a movie a big hit. And they would use something like uh, Morbius, for example, as like a, a pro, you know, like as, as like the poster child as to why or like they would use it as a counter argument as to why is it that not every meme would make a movie a success. And well, that's technically true, but I would also argue that with Morbius, that's a bit of an, uh, of, uh, you know, that's a bit of an exception, mainly because of the fact that, well, technically the meme that is from Morbius is technically not from Morbius. It's more of a meme based on Morbius. So like you don't actually see Jared Leto say it's Morbin time or whatever. So in that regard, I think that's kind of an exception to the rule. But whenever you do see uh, something that directly comes from a movie and it becomes a viral sensation, then at that point, that's when you see a lot of people like really getting into the meme that they're jumping onto the trend. And if they want to have more context or like have a fuller understanding of what this meme is all about, then they would have to go and watch the movie. And we've already seen a, a couple of examples, even recently, of movies that they have become like these meme sensation to the point where it makes the movie a massive hit. Like one great example is Megan. Megan, like with that little dance that she would do before uh, killing one person, like and, and it was a, like a popular dance that you saw like in the trailers and stuff. That was, a, you know, that became a viral sensation on TikTok and on social media to the point where it translated to Megan becoming a big hit and now it's going to become a massive franchise. Or another big example is with Puss in Boots, where with Puss in Boots The Last Wish, the, you, you could argue about like what really became a meme on that thing, rather it be with uh, the wolf, uh, the wolf, a.k.a. death, or with uh, Big Jack Horner, or with anything else uh, from the feature, or with uh, Perito. Uh, like, they, they, like, there are several other examples, like a, a, a lot of templates uh, in which they would turn into a meme. But through those memes, they would go and translate onto the success of Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, how that became one of the biggest surprises of 2022 and debatably 
early 2023. And in the case of the Super Mario Brothers movie, yes, it is in regards to Peaches, how that song is becoming so popular, how it is such a massive hit. And even to this day, people are still singing it. People are still making variations of it. People are still making memes out of it. And I'll even say during uh, my karaoke night with friends last night, we actually uh, sang Peaches. Like, it is that catchy. It is that memorable. Like, as a song itself, like, it is definitely well crafted. And like I said, it is very catchy. And also, it has like a lot of humor because it's about Bowser singing this, like, you know, this soulful love ballad to Princess Peach. So, like, it, it has like all those little elements, those little bits and pieces of like, just get you know just making it a great time overall as much as the movie and the funny thing is is how it is so unexpected like it has that element of surprise because you would never expect this kind of song to show up in the super mario brothers movie and i'll even say this does the song even have a point to the feature itself honestly no it really is nothing more but filler it really is just this random moment that serves little to no purpose to the plot like it, it was already established before that bowser was in love with princess peach so the movie could really go without it but is the movie better because it has peaches honestly Yes, it does. Because like I said, it is still a great song. It is still a catchy song. And it is one of those moments that really do catch you off guard. That really does enhance the enjoyability. Again, it's much like the movie itself. It's not meant to be great. It is meant to give people a great time. And that song alone has given people a tremendous time. It's given them a great time. And because it, it became so popular on social media, then it helps to go and make the movie itself be more successful in order to go and watch that on the big screen to see Bowser with his little piano solo singing about his love for Peach. So, and, and I mean, not, not to mention there's also the live action version where instead of seeing Bowser with his hallucinations of a lovely peach, it's just Jack Black just dancing around, which is equally as hilarious. But overall, though, I got to say that, yeah, it's no, yeah, like with these additional factors, it's no surprise that now we are seeing the Super Mario Brothers movie really be you know really becoming massively successful and so fast too i think compared to uh last time uh when i talked about it like it has now gained around 300 million dollars at the global box office and i think it is safe to say I'll, I'll repeat this but it's pretty much secure that the super mario brothers movie will cross over a billion dollars at the box office, especially with the fact that it doesn't have any other competition so far, or at least any direct competition that it aims for kids and families. And um, the next animated feature isn't going to be like until over a month from now. So yeah, I think like it is, it is for sure that it's going to make over a billion dollars at the box office. And with how it is performing right now, We'll see how far this movie can go because, yeah, this is going to break record. This is going to be breaking records for sure. All right. So with that said and done, I would like to go into the chat wall and I wanted to ask you all, what do you think about how it is performing right now? What do you think about the fact that the Super Mario Brothers movie is now the highest grossing film based on a video game of all time? So let me know what you think on this. Let's see. Uh, yeah, this is well-deserved, no doubt. I saw this for the third time today in 3D. Although the film is great, 3D is still ass, so I'm glad I could help the local economy. Uh, it's probably gonna cross a billion at this rate, but it, uh, will it keep this title as the highest grossing of the year? Nah, I imagine Guardians 3 or Indiana Jones is gonna take the spot. Or Barbie. That is definitely true. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of big-name movies that are gonna be coming soon. I mean, like... Even like uh, in Mar like even when you look in May and in June alone, like you got a bunch. Like you already mentioned, Guardians, Indiana Jones, 
uh like you got barbie in the summer but then you also got the little mermaid remake you know that's going to be a major hit you got across the spider-verse you got pixar's elemental you got the controversial flash movie you already got so much that is going to be very competitive at the box office so we will see how this will go and they they all have a pretty solid chance of beating mario's record to be the highest grossing film of the year all right let's see now to be honest this seems to be good news to me to see film uh film breaking that highest grossing video game of all time this past weekend my weekend was terrible because my mom was in a head-on collision accident where she only received chest pain and that was it Ooh, sorry to hear that However, this news, con uh, consoling with my friends and seeing Suzume in theaters, it did help me feel better during my bad weekend. I'm happy to see Mario once again break records. That helps me make me smile, so congrats once again. All right, very nice. Congratulations to Illumination for breaking so many records and uh, finally making its second good movie. <laughs> well, I mean, they've done, let's be honest, they've done a few more good films. They still, they, I mean, let's be honest, they still made more good movies than Sony Animation, I'm just saying. Uh, and the first good video game movie that doesn't have Pikachu or Sonic the Hedgehog in it. Although the fact that not even Mario is safe from our infernal and eternal culture war that makes me die a little inside. And we should probably address the fact that migration is now burdened with a tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, I feel like it may, it, it uh, I feel like it might not even make a quarter of what Mario's mo uh, of the Mario movies box office. Oh, well, I mean, for migration, we will have to wait and see. I mean, so far, Illumination is just making a tremendous success with it. And who knows, like considering Illumination's reputation, like really got built up, it could transcend onto migration as well. Uh, let's see now. Uh, I don't think this is a surprise to no one. I think because of the movie is extremely true to the Mario games and the word of mouth from people, it has helped the movie to be as successful as it is right now. And by next weekend, it'll probably hit a billion dollars at the box office. And the movie hasn't even been released in places like Japan yet, so I can imagine the movie being huge there. Oh my god, Japan especially, dude. Um, yeah, so much so. I, I would agree there. And I'll say now that if I would make a prediction of when it's going to hit the billion dollar mark at the box office, I don't think it's immediately going to be next week, but I'm going to guess it'll probably be in the beginning of May, like one month after the movie's release, then it'll hit a billion. That's going to be my guess. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I was not expecting the song to go this hard, but it sure did. The first time I went to see it with me and my diehard Nintendo fan friends, we burst out laughing to the point we theorized almost got into trouble. Oh, we almost got into trouble and kicked out. Jack Black is sure a legend. Uh, as for my thoughts of the movie, 7 out of 10 and Angry Birds better. Anyways, uh, glad this song is getting popular in the meme community. And the song charts uh, sin, uh, since the song slaps hard. Oh yeah, definitely, dude. All right, I'm going to read one more comment before we uh, take our first break. Um, the Mario movie was an absolute bla blast, regardless of what pitfalls it had. My personal highlights is how awesome Bowser was uh, as a genuinely and fun and dangerous villain all throughout the feature. I like my villains who are proud of their evil doings than the uh, abusers or war criminals that Disney seems uh, suspiciously fixated on forgiving without significant consequences to their actions. I guess it does depend on uh, which one. <laughs> oh, yeah, Disney really needs to like get up on their villain game for sure. But anyways, it is now time that we are going to go on our first break. And when we do return, we are going to go look. Uh, we are going to go and start things off with watching trailers. And the first one we got, well, it may not be based on a. Uh, it may not be an animated film or a movie or anything like that, but it is definitely something that like the Mario movie, is highly anticipated. In fact, you could say it is the most anticipated game of the year. And we are back. Now, uh, when it comes to the first trailer that we are going to be watching, I figured we might as well go and have a smooth transition going from one highly anticipated uh, Nintendo project to the next where we are going to be looking into a video game. But as I said, this is debatably 
the most anticipated game of the year or even one of the most anticipated games in recent years considering that the original game is considered to be a masterpiece for the nintendo switch so having an encore and having another game like that of course is going to get many people excited and let me tell you this trailer certainly added fuel especially with the fact that it is going to be coming soon so with that said let us now go and check out the trailer for the highly anticipated nintendo switch game and also the final trailer before its release the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom And that is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, the final trailer before it's officially uh, before it is officially released on May 12th. So just under a month. So it is right around the corner. And oh, man, what this like this is just a video game. But man, does this feel like a cinematic experience like oh man nintendo really sells it on this trailer and definitely does hype things up for what we have in store uh not only presenting the story of it in which we do see that ganondorf is going to be coming back uh, like uh, and it's been such a long time since we've even seen ganondorf like it's been since like what like uh, ever since twilight princess like, like, I know before, like, technically, Ganon has been present a lot in many of the uh, recent Zelda games, but, like, that that's just, like, the pig version. We're talking about, like, the regular human Ganondorf. Like, now he's officially back, and now is gonna really spice things up with what is happening in the game. But, of course, in here, you do get a lot of what is familiar what you do know from breath of the wild from uh the animation of it all from the uh designs from from like the way that they would shade the use of colors and everything like you got a lot of those familiar assets from breath of the wild that is coming back and even like all the gameplay and stuff like that but now they added so many new creative twists or what they are presenting to us like all these different new abilities these new things that you could do including like building uh some like vehicles like now you could go and create you know instead of always riding a horse you could build your like you know you could build a tank you could build like you know just take random pieces from the floor and you could just make yourself a vehicle so that you can go and prepare your battles and stuff like they they show a lot of the new mechanics of what you can do and how you can explore the different worlds with how things are, are gonna go. But also, one thing that really does stand out are the battles, showing you all the creative ways that you could go and fight enemies. And those parts are definitely exciting. Like, uh, one great example, like, um, yeah, like you, like you see a lot of like roll, like uh, fire, fire, fireballs attacking. But there was at one point I do remember it was yeah like right over here where you're like right you know like you're you're fighting against an enemy and you're both on different mine carts like there 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 are, there are a lot of these times that actually do feel exciting or even like this one like yeah you build this thing and like <laughs> hold on get back get back there it's like you, like you're riding this box and you have to go and and fight like this golem in which on top of him is is just a bunch of enemies that are shooting arrows at you so there are going to be creative ways that you got to go and fight against like major, like these big intimidating enemies or like, you know, you got to activate some contraptions to go and mess up their base. Like over here, oh, that, like they're, they're showing you a lot of different or even, even that you're joined by some friends that you're not going to be alone and you will have allies with you who will go and join you in your battle. And you do have a lot of recurring characters 
Like you got Hyrule's favorite buddy over here coming back. So it's not just going to be Link and Zelda, but you do have other recurring characters that will be returning from Breath of the Wild. So that's also another aspect that is so exciting because I know there are some fan favorites that are in there. And I know Nintendo will deliver on bringing back those characters that they love. And it looks like they are definitely going to be the successors to the Guardians uh, from last time. Because if, if you have played breath of the wild then you may remember uh there were the four guardians each uh guardian in their own base to go and protect hyrule castle from the evil forces of ganon or ganondorf so it looks like now they are going to be the successors now they are going to be in charge and they will be teaming up with with link so you will have some uh assistance in there as well which is going to be great to see oh but then Going back into the story, of course, one thing that definitely got people excited is to see the grand return of Ganondorf, but not just Ganondorf. Do not look away. You witness a king's revival. We also got Matt Mercer who's going to be voicing Ganondorf. And in case you don't know Matt Mercer, uh, he's a prominent voice actor who has done a whole lot of uh, anime voices, including uh, Naruto. But you may remember him most uh, from his uh, prominent position in the uh, popular D&D &D show Critical Role. He, uh, I, I believe he is the dungeon master in Critical Role, so... Uh, seeing him now playing the role of Ganondorf, that is going to be very, very exciting. And even the performance that, uh, he has done here, like, it does sound pretty intimidating. Like, it does sound like, uh, they are gonna play, like, this, um, uh, you know, this new, like, he really is gonna, like, really amp up the threatening role. He's not gonna be, like, Bowser, where there's gonna be a comedic edge. No, this is gonna be serious, and this is gonna be, like, this man is going to destroy the Earth as we know it. And definitely an intimidating threat. And one thing I will say, like, even though we only got a small taste of it, one thing that I do wish that we could see a bit more of is, um, the bosses. Because, oh, man, do we see a whole bunch of freaky bosses like we got like we got that weird like snake spider monster thing like oh my god like already presenting it as huge and then there was like one quick little moment where we may see like debatably maybe it's the final boss oh yeah and we got like yeah that we got this big boy over here but um ah, no that's not the one that i'm talking about there was at one point like you slow like you quickly see like what could be a three-headed Ganondorf? Uh, hold on. Is it, is it somewhere in the end? Just want to double check just to be sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's over here. Yeah, this thing. Like, it, look, it looks like it has the Ganondorf pattern. But, oh, man. It's going to be exciting when you're going to fight these bosses. They, are, they look like they're going to be huge. They're going to be intimidating. But I'm definitely ready for it. So, overall, I just got to say that uh oh some okay oh so people are, are saying that apparently that is not uh ganondorf that's apparently uh oh that's gliok okay <laughs> uh apparent okay so maybe it's not but okay either if it's ganon or not still though still pretty awesome and i mean i'm sorry like you cannot blame me because like it does look ganondorf ish I mean, like, if someone would tell me Ganondorf would turn into a three-headed dragon like King Ghidorah, I would expect something like this. It would definitely look like uh, a, a dragon. It would absolutely look like a dragon that would be like this. You know, that I don't know. It looks Ganondorfish to me. Or maybe it is one of Ganondorf's minions or descendants or whatever. So you get what I mean, though. But yeah, overall... This trailer definitely does make me excited because it has definitely sold me on the idea that this is going to be this brand new version of Breath of the Wild where we are going to get many of what we love from Breath of the Wild, what made that game one of Nintendo Switch's greatest masterpieces, and they're really going to add more and more to it, including 
giving a significant update on the story with what's going to be happening on Link's adventures there and uh, the current status of Hyrule and why is it that Link has to go and save Zelda. So I'm definitely excited for this game. Uh, I'm even debating on probably getting the special edition. I'm still thinking about it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but uh, seeing this though, it pretty much confirms to me that I want to go and get this game because it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, Nintendo did a great job with this trailer. And if you are excited for Tears of the Kingdom, then keep in mind that the game is going to be coming out on May 12th. So with that said, I would like to go into the chat here and I would like to ask you all, what do you all think? about this trailer the final trailer of tears of the kingdom are you excited to go and play this game uh did you enjoy this trailer did you not let me know what you think on this uh let's see now uh boy this is definitely a hype trailer the only major highlight for ganondorf with uh matt mercer as the voice now i can live my fan fiction of linking fighting against uh josuke from jojo while he throws a pool noodle at me and yes that is a jojo reference uh as we as well as a joe cat reference oh yeah that is true matt mercer is from uh it, like he did do some work on jojo as well that is definitely true uh let's see haven't played breath of the wild since i don't have a switch but i watched a few playthroughs of it the second installment looks very promising now all we need is an animated movie for 2026, the 40th anniversary of the franchise. Which studio, American or Japan, do you want to have for this movie? Well, I mean, there is no confirmation if that is going... I don't, I don't think, at least, there is going to be a confirmation. But, um, I don't... Honestly, I, I don't know, actually. Um... You know, you know, if I would, if I would want one, I would, I would say Cartoon Saloon. I think Cartoon Saloon's art style would fit beautifully with the Legend of Zelda theming, especially like with the tone as well. Like they can, you know, like they won't go and try to make it like your typical American kid friendly animated movie. Like they would go and like make something more artistic and a lot more serious. So I think, like, if I would pick one studio to make a Legend of Zelda film, I would go with Cartoon Saloon. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the most anticipated game of 2023, considering that my most anticipated game, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac, is coming out this fall, but I'll agree that it is one of the most anticipated games of the year. I've never played any Zelda games or cartoons featuring the excuse me princess meme that I poke fun of, but... It looks interesting from this trailer, but yeah, I guess it looks cool. Uh, not sure I want to play though, as I have little experience with it. Oh, you gotta try at least once. Like if you have a Switch, I highly like it's one of those like must-haves. Like you gotta try Breath of the Wild at least once to to try it out. It depends. Like if in fact if you do enjoy uh spite like Marvel Spider-Man, then you'll definitely have a good time with Legend of Zelda because it still has that open world feel but uh there you know there's a lot more complexities to it as well that is actually easy to learn and you'll get you'll get more than your money's worth when you buy breath of the wild so i highly recommend you go and play breath of the wild first so that you do get an idea of what it's all about and then you can go and jump into tears of the kingdom uh or then again i could be wrong because you never know with what they'll do with the game uh let's see even though I'm more of a Mario fan than a Zelda fan, this looks absolutely incredible. A lot of the gameplay mechanics look absolutely sick. The visuals look great. And the grand return of Ganondorf? I am sold. I'm definitely going to give this a pre-order, even if it means putting in my $70 into the pit. It burns. Oh no, not into the pit. It burns. Although I feel guilty raving about this game while I'm playing Mario Kart Double Dash. Right now, I'm playing as Marmar and Expandong. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I can imagine that, like, people who are playing Double Dash, of course, they're going to get... They're, like, the immediate pairing is going to be Mario and Donkey Kong just to relive that moment or moments in, uh, Mar in uh, the Mario movie. I mean, of course. I'm surprised that for, like, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, they didn't bring back that mechanic. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? 
Uh, this game looks good, but I sadly cannot play it. I have everything I need to play it, but I have final exams to get into an animation college. Will be taking over my entire time slot to study. By the way, my teacher worked on The Lion King. Not joking. Well, nice. So I cannot play this. However, if I do get the chance, I'll get it. Also, for some uh, for some reason, Picture Link getting no capes treatment while in the air. For now, I'll stick with the Legend of Yumo uh, Wickersham Tears of the Newell. Yeah, I I mean like keep in mind though, there's no rush to go and immediately play this. In fact, you're probably gonna do the smart thing where you are focusing on your exams because, well, of course, education should go above playing video games, but like wait until like the hype dies down and you'll have a much better chance to go and uh get Tears of the Kingdom. Because I would not be surprised if this is gonna be the kind that uh at least during the month of May. This is a, this is going to be a game where it will be frequently sold out. Uh, let's see what other comments we do have here. Uh, ah, that was a really Zelda good trailer. However, it wasn't enough for me to count uh, Tears of the Kingdom as my most hyped game of the year. Though it is among my top five below Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, uh, Crash Team Rumble, Disney Speedstorm, and Pikmin 4 in that order. And yes, I've seen uh, the Ganondorf thirst tweets. I don't understand them, and I think they're kind of weird. Then again, I've spent a better part of seven months thirsting over a Pixar fire babe with Elastigirl hips. So yeah, glass hour, uh, glass hour houses, as they say. I mean, like, yeah, like, it's, it's kind of funny with the way, like, they presented Ganondorf, and you see, like, in his official artwork, like, they made him beefy as F. Like, I could totally imagine people thirsting for that Ganondorf. But, I mean, like, you know, it's not for every, you know, it's not necessarily for everyone. Everyone has their own preferences of what they would go and thirst for. I mean, even with me, like, you know, I, you know, I do understand why people would definitely be into that, but it's not my personal thing. I would actually be more like you. I would be more into the fire babe in Pixar's Elemental more so than I would than uh, Ganondorf in Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, but I mean, like, Everyone has their own preferences, and as long as they're not hurting anyone with those uh, thirsts and stuff like that, then, you know, it's all good. It's all fine. Uh, let's see. Breath of the Wild has helped revolutionize the open world genre, so trying to surpass that is quite a challenge, but this trailer does look like it will succeed. With more characters, a much greater threat within the, uh, with uh, the revived Ganondorf, the new environments and all of the abilities, this will most likely be worth that $70 price. Oh yeah, now people are getting horny for Ganondorf. Exactly. Uh, and I feel a little jealous because I gotta say, as a Canadian, like it kind of, you know, like I, I'm honestly sad to see that, oh, Americans are gonna pay $70, just $70, because I'm just saying in Canada, if I'm gonna go and buy Tears of the Kingdom or just the regular version with taxes, it's gonna be 90 bucks. So yeah, uh, buying video games is not a high priority considering how expensive they can be. All right, I'm going to read one more comment before we go on our next break and talk about the next trailer. Uh, let's see, I'll go with... Uh, yeah, okay, I'll go with you. This trailer is awesome. Breath of the Wild was by far one of the best Zelda games made, and this looks pretty promising. The visuals are incredible, and I love how they keep uh, they are keeping a lot of the things that made Breath of the Wild a great game and even improving it. So overall, I'm excited for this game and I hope it lives up to the hype. All right, so there are some people who are excited and well, there may be some that may disagree with me on my statement that this is the most anticipated game of 2023 because yeah, it is true that there are definitely others as well, but this is definitely, you cannot deny that this is definitely one of them that is absolutely hyped up. And this trailer did a tremendous job in doing that. And so we are going to go into another break. And when we do come back, we are going to be looking into another trailer that, at least for me, is another thing that is very hyped up, that I am very hyped up and is uh, debatably one of my most anticipated shows of the year. And we are back. And by the way, I just want to go and get this out of the way. This is actually a news that 
honestly, I never knew about because I was pretty busy today with setting up this podcast. And uh, well, yesterday I didn't know about it because, well, I was out with friends. But uh, just want to go and quickly address that apparently there was the breaking news of the fact that Sega officially purchased Ravio for, uh, I, I believe, to be $776 million and stuff like that. So that's something I didn't know. And, uh, you know, I it, like this was just news that like has just registered my uh, in, in my head as we had that break. So uh, I don't really have a lot that I could say for now about it. So uh, but the best that I could say is just we'll wait and see with uh, what happened. All right, so uh, with that said, though, we're not here to go and talk about Sega buying Ravio. We are here to go and uh, check out a brand new trailer. And uh, with our next trailer that we have here, this is actually a show that I am very excited for and that I personally am very hyped up to go and check out because, of course, I am a huge lifelong Muppet fan. And when I saw the trailer for this... Even I got to admit, this might have a lot more potential than what anyone else would probably expect. So with that said, let us now go watch our next trailer and check out Muppets Mayhem. The Mayhem? Everybody watch! And that was the Muppets Mayhem. To which all the episodes, or at least season one of it, is going to be coming out on May 10th. Now, as I said before, I'm a major Muppet fan, and whenever Disney comes out with something with the Muppets, I'm definitely excited, I'm definitely hyped up to see what they would have in store. And when I heard that they would go and make this entire show with the with just the electric mayhem like this isn't going to be something that would have like the usual gang with kermit miss piggy fozzy and gonzo that really got me intrigued because this really does sound like something that's going to be completely different where they really are committed to expanding the muppet universe per se and now they're going to go and give the spotlight to uh, what is often considered to be overlooked Muppets, because yeah, we are definitely familiar with the Electric Mayhem, but again, they're not necessarily uh, among the most popular ones. They're not like the first ones that you would think of, like with uh, Kermit, Gonzo, Miss Piggy, and Fozzie. Like maybe with the exception of Animal, but well, I mean, Animal is Animal. Uh, but but um, still, I was like very open and very intrigued with what they would go and have in store with this. And then I saw this trailer. And let me tell you, when I looked at the trailer, looked at all the different jokes that they would do, all the different things that they're presenting. I just got to say that, honestly, if this show plays its cards right, if all the elements that they are presenting here, it it does actually work out, then I think this is going to be the best thing the Muppets has ever released in recent years. Now, this is not to go and slam on any of the recent stuff that the Muppets did put out, like Muppets Now or Muppets Haunted Mansion. Like, they're definitely solid in their own right. But this one, though, this one looks like it has something very special. And even some elements in which... It looks like they tried to go and do the previous time, but it didn't work out as well. Like one thing that I could say is like the uh, the mockumentary aspect in the very beginning, they actually managed to nail that. Like they tried to do that with the 2015 Muppets and well, that really did not go as well, especially with audiences. But in here, uh, like when you do see that little documentary aspect, when you see like these uh, musicians and these rock legends, when they would go and talk about the electric mayhem and you see their enthusiasm uh, when talking to them or talking about them and stuff like that, there actually is that element of humor and that element of fun that they would go and put in. And also, let me just say that the comedy in general with what they have shown is fantastic like this you know in just this trailer alone 
Like they would just deliver gag after gag after gag. And each one of them are actually really funny, not just um, in terms of their timing and just like in terms of the joke itself, but also with the way that they would play around with the characters and they would show that the electric mayhem are not always the brightest. Like one joke that I did find funny is how the electric mayhem were so enthusiastic with the one guy uh, having a fork like, um, yeah, like, uh, oh, where, where is it? It's like, uh, somewhere, no, it's uh, like somewhere in the middle, I do believe. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Always right over happy. here. Wee. Watch. Hey, guys, look, I got a fork. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. You did it. <laughs> or even another one is, uh, oh, like, when they when they renovated the entire place and Animal is just admiring the neon sign. It begins. Daba you. Be a good animal. <laughs> like you got all these like little moments that like these moments of comedy that are not that are not just funny, but they also like enhance the characters and like it may it helps you connect with these characters in the first place. And not to mention that. Uh, the story is also very intriguing as well with the whole plot line of having the Electric Mayhem and try to give them their first ever album, despite the fact that, you know, they've been so well known far and wide for their music. And yet throughout the decades, they've never done a single album before. So now it's the journey of actually creating that album. And uh, and from there, that not only is it a very intriguing premise, like not only does that sound interesting, but you could also see that uh, at least by the end of that trailer, they do show that it brings in a component of heart to show uh, the electric mayhem, not just as a rock group, but also as a family. How is it that after all these years, they still manage to uh, stick together and to... Uh, you know, to to be the electric mayhem that we all know and love. Like, how is it that they were able to just tolerate each other? Or how is it that they're able to get, to get through life together for so long? So that's also going to be another aspect to look forward to. But then, of course, one thing that they do deliver and that is a component that is a Muppet tradition is all the special guest stars. Man, is this thing loaded with special guests like not only are you going to be getting a whole bunch of like musical guest stars as well considering that music is a prominent theme and and uh correct me if i'm wrong but you also got people such as uh like at, at the start you got little nas x i believe or little nash x oh yeah that that was also pretty funny uh yeah like right over here uh, like uh it, it is little Na it, it is little nas x right just want to like just want to be sure but uh like you got him uh like yeah you got you got him around and then like just before of course you gotta have danny trejo because nowadays you can't really have a muppet project without danny trejo i mean he's been show like he really has been showing up in like so many muppet projects whenever there's something the like the muppets are doing something like you gotta have danny trejo like he was there in uh he, he was in muppets most wanted I think he appeared in 2015 Muppets. I could be wrong. Uh, I know he was in the Muppets Haunted Mansion. He was in Muppets Now. And now he's going to be in the Muppets Mayhem. And yeah, some people are even mentioning uh, Kristen Schaal has also shown up. Um, like you got, uh, like, I believe it's like somewhere in the end. Like you do have Kristen Schaal. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, hold on. Yeah, there she is. You got Kristen Schaal showing up. Uh, then you also got, uh, you got Kevin, uh, Kevin, Kevin Smith, who also appeared. So you all like, and, and I gotta say like, even this little bit, like that was also hilarious. Oh yeah. And you also have, uh, Paula Abdul who shows up. See this camera. Yeah. Okay. Do one. not look into this camera. No, 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 no. Action. <laughs> like that's hilarious. Even the dude in the back is also looking at the camera. Like, it's such, you know, it's such a great moment. And then, of course, the moment that everyone's been waiting for, it has finally arrived. Yes, we are finally going to have a Muppet episode with Weird Al. Yes, Weird Al is finally going to be teaming up with the Muppets on something.
so yes we do have so that moment is arriving so we got so so yeah there are so many guest stars that they are going to be bringing in and that is why i am saying that if disney really play their cards right or disney and the muppets if they play their cards right in this then this is not just going to be another good new addition this is going to be a great new addition to the Muppets and probably the best Muppet series that we've had in a long, long time. Like there is so much promise. There is so much potential. And I really, you know, for the sake of the Muppets, I really hope that they do deliver on this one because I really, I really did enjoy watching everything that they do have with the Muppets mayhem. And I really do hope that it does like come out great. So I am absolutely excited to go and watch this series. And again, I do hope that it does turn out to be great that all these jokes that they are as phony as what we do see that the celebrity cameos and the uh, special guest stars, you know, they are also fun and that the story can also be great and like not only help expand uh, the character development of the members of the Electric Mayhem, but also like to provide with the heart. Like it really, this is a show that that technically based on this trailer, it has everything. It has heart. It has a, an interesting story. It ha like the comedy really sells the special guest stars. You know, they're all great to see like show up in here. So all, all, like, honestly, it's got everything. It just has to be released and to prove to us that maybe this could be something really solid. And I am absolutely excited to see that happen. And honestly, all, all I hope for is that it is the best. That at the very, or maybe it's too much to ask, but if the Muppets Mayhem can actually do better than The Mandalorian, at least critically then I think we have a winner right over here. So again, if you are ex as excited as I am for the Muppets Mayhem, then keep in mind that it will be coming soon to Disney Plus on May 10th. All right, so with that said, I would like to go into the chat wall. I want to ask you all, what do you all think about this trailer of the Muppets Mayhem? Are you excited for this series to come out? Did you enjoy watching this trailer? Did you not? Let me know what you all think on this. All right, let's see now. Screw the Mandalorian, this is the spinoff of a massive Disney-owned franchise with ties to Frank Oz that I'm most hyped for. Everything about this trailer hits. Uh, it shows that this is going to have loads of heart and humor we all love about the Muppets. Also, Weird Al is God. That wasn't a joke, it's just a matter of fact. And I'm glad Disney is acknowledging it. Also, I'm glad Kevin Smith is in another Henson production after earth to ned yeah it is true like when you do see this moment it does look like weird al is god and i'm glad that they are portraying it this way so honestly you know that the way that they're going to be handling the special guest stars and the celebrity cameos it's gonna go well so i'm definitely excited with what they have in store and i can't wait to see that weird al moment uh let's see now I don't know why, but I am the only one uh, getting Sonic Underground vibes in this trailer. Weird comparison, I know, but instead of the traditional Muppet theme, the theme should be... Oh my god, I cannot believe that I actually know this. <laughs> the puppet's born! The stage awaits! The label warns of a deadly fate! Give up your Muppets! Separate! Bide your time! Lie and wait! Muppets Underground! Muppets Underground! They made a vow! The laughter will be found! Excellent trailer though, gotta watch it! I don't know- how is it that this song has stuck in my mind. How do I know this? <laughs> like, seriously, it's one of those useless things in my head that suddenly I know well. Like, what the fridge? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> hey, at least I can execute a, jo a, a joke well. So, anyhow, I gotta say, this trailer is really impressive. I love how they are giving characters like the Electric Mayhem more attention than other Muppet characters. The humor is really fun, and the celebrity appearances are great. So, overall, this has a lot of potential, and I really do hope this can be the best Muppet project in a long time and finally prove that Disney still cares about the Muppets. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I cannot wait for that as well. Oh, uh, let's 
see. Um, I think I'm going to read one more comment. Uh, anybody would have something to say? Um, anyone else? And does anybody else uh, have a comment? I mean, this is the, uh, this is the moment here. Just want to know, uh, what do we have? No, anybody, nobody. Okay. Well, I guess with that said that, um, well, we could go and move on to our next break, and we have one more trailer that we are going to go and look at. But this one, though, even though that with Muppets Mayhem and uh, Tears of the Kingdom, they provide a lot of potential. This one, though, mm, I think we're going to have a bit of a debate on that. All right, we are back. Now, I know that in terms of trailers, I've been showing a whole bunch of different stuff other than animation. We started off with a video game and then we went in a uh, technically live action show. But this time we actually do have an animated series. But this one, though, I guess you could say that I know there are some people out there who are pretty excited for it. But there are also some other factors that does leave a lot of people questioning how this would go. Technically, this is the grand return of a beloved franchise and uh, one that is undeniably a cult favorite, but will this be a part of what people will love about it? Well, I guess we will have to wait and see when we do check out our final trailer of this episode with Gremlins Secrets of the Mogwai. Grandpa, where are we? And that is Gremlins Secrets of the Mogwai, to which it will be coming soon on May 23rd on Max. No, not HBO Max. It is now just Max. Trust me, I'll talk about that later. But anyways, uh, when it comes to Gremlins, I will say that admittedly, it's been such a long time since I've actually seen that movie. But I know that it is one of those that I should, because technically it is a horror film, but it is one of those horror comedies. And especially with the Gremlins themselves, technically the best way that they could be described is evil cartoon characters. And I'm sure that one day if I do rewatch it, it will be one that I would so get down with it uh, with. I would definitely I would definitely enjoy the crap out of that because like, hey, it technically it's a horror film with evil cartoon characters so i'll definitely enjoy that uh but uh, yeah like there are some things though that i am familiar with and a lot of my knowledge from the gremlins admittedly they do come from james rolfe when he would go and talk about it in sin masker's monster madness but again i am very aware that this is one of those like highly beloved cult favorites but with that said though watching this trailer even if I'm not as familiar with the Gremlins franchise as many others, even I can tell that with this series, it's just, uh, eh, that, that's the best way to put it, you know? And, you know, I think even Gizmo himself actually said it best, you know? Like, uh, yo, G Gizmo, uh, just wondering, uh, what, what do you think about this trailer? Yeah, that, that's what I thought, too. That, that's, how I, that's how I personally feel about it. And I, I think for me, the biggest problem about it, and I mean, like, I, I am aware that how I feel about this, it's not translated to how it's going to be in real life or, like, how it was actually made. But there's just something about this trailer that makes the series look like it is mechanically made. Like, this isn't actually something that Joe Dante wanted to go and do and actually help, like, really expand it. In fact, I did hear that apparently Joe Dante himself, the original director of Gremlins, that he did put in a lot, like, he, he, he did provide a lot of creative input onto the show. But there's just something from what I see that a lot of it feels like it's just executively crafted or it's just mechanically made in order to go and get the best amount of profit because it really like the feeling that i get from it is that it looks like it's just your typical asian themed animated show you know something that wants to be similar to like kung fu panda or avatar the last airbender or any of those asian themed animated shows that would be made in america 
But then uh, Warner Brothers Discovery stepped in and they would say, oh, let's go and try to make it more marketable. Why don't we add the Gremlins onto it? Because the Grem, you know, the Gremlins make money. So this show will make money if you go and add in the Gremlins. That's what that's honestly how it feels like. You know, this ain't so different than like the other Asian shows that you would see or the Asian movies uh, that would come out or Asian theme per se, you know, that that really wants to go and try to capitalize on China to capitalize on, uh, you, you know, to like, ap you know, to uh, appeal to that crowd over there. You know, similarly to what we have seen recently with stuff like uh, even with movies, especially with uh, the Kung Fu Panda films or DreamWorks Abominable, or even with uh, Pixar's Turning Red, that it does have a lot of those components that do relate to China. And you do get some of that in this trailer with Secrets of the Mogwai, where a lot of it is just crafted because they want to go and really appeal to the Chinese market. It just, uh, like with the Gremlins, however, they just so happen to be there because, well... Hey, I mean, people recognize the Gremlins, so the Gremlins fans are going to go and jump into this. But again, like, I could be, uh, like, that. I'm not saying that's what it actually happened. That's just a feeling that I personally get. It's just, I see a lot more of the generic stuff uh, that you would normally see in any other Asian-themed uh, TV uh, Asian-themed animated show, and then you got, like, the extra edition of the Gremlins. But even at that, I actually did talk to a friend who is a Gremlins fan, and even he told me that in terms of, like, the Gremlins input, a lot of it doesn't seem to make sense. Like, uh, I remember he told me that uh, the add-on of Gizmo, or, like, to confirm the fact that the Mogwai that we see in this, sh in this show is indeed Gizmo, it feels a bit forced, because, G you know, Gizmo got his name because... Uh, of like a, a major backstory that does relate to the human characters from the original movie. So like even in here, it, like in this, even fans feel that there's just something that doesn't feel natural with the way that they're trying to cram in the gremlins onto this. And even for me, like even though I'm not that familiar with the gremlins, like you could easily replace those gremlins with like any kind of like evil creature you could put in like pokemon in there you could create like little dragons or you could create demons or whatever and it wouldn't really change much that's kind of the impression that i'm just getting and even like some of the other factors i don't know like a lot of them do feel pretty iffy like um even the animation itself i'm not saying it's terrible but even that one is a little bit it's a, a little bit meh like it's the kind of like typical CG animated show that doesn't necessarily push boundaries. It's not trying to do anything new. Even the animation, it just feels like it has the it has that kind of energy of just getting the job done. You know, like they're not pushing for anything artistically new. They're not trying to go and uh, create, you know, to develop a new memorable style. It's just really to go and get the job done, you know, like, hey, we got to go make a Gremlin series. This is probably what they look like if they're in a cartoon. So let's just go and do that, call it a day, and then apply, and then uh, go prepare for what your next job could be, either at Warner Brothers or at something else. So honestly, in my opinion on this, it's just like, yeah, maybe there is like maybe I could see some potential. Maybe they'll try to go and really expand the world of the Gremlins to go deep into the origins of where the Mogwai come from. What are the relation uh, the relations between the Mogwai and the Gremlins? Uh, how do they connect with the entire Asian lore and stuff like that? How are they gonna bring that in? Like maybe there can be some potential that I don't see yet in Secrets of the Mogwai, but. I don't know, maybe it is just the trailer's fault, but I'm not really digging this. I I'm sorry, but I just don't really see a whole lot that's, like, really appealing or that, you know, it there's nothing about it that feels like it's really wowing me uh, with this uh, trailer. That, especially with someone who could technically be considered a newcomer 
like looking at this i don't think this is really gonna make me jump in and be like oh wow i'm gonna be introduced to the gremlins now i want to see more of it no not really it, it's just there's just something about it that again it feels more mechanically made than it feels like a legitimate labor of love and uh, I, I i don't know there's just there's nothing about it that feels like it's really appealing me or is catching my attention as much as either Muppets Mayhem or Tears of the Kingdom. So I, mean, I could be wrong. And, you know, I would like to be proven wrong if this show does turn out to be great. But so far, I'm just not really impressed with anything that they're showing in this series. So if you are interested in checking out Secrets of the Mogwai, then keep in, mind, keep in mind that it is going to be coming soon on Max on May 23rd. And with that said, I would like to go and pass on to uh, the chat wall, and I would like to know your opinion about what do you all think in terms of the Secrets of the Mogwai trailer, or technically the teaser trailer. Are you all interested in checking this show out? Are you guys going to give this a pass? Or especially, if you are a fan of the, of the Gremlins movies, I would love to know your opinion on this. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, when it comes to the original, it was good for what it is, but I haven't seen the second film other than having the Looney Tunes appearance at the beginning and the end of the sequel. For this series, it looked okay despite being in production for a while. The store, uh, the story and, uh, anime, uh, the story and characters aren't appeal, aren't appealing, and even the animation feels weak, as well as some, of, uh, some other than that. Uh, I'm not, not that interested. Although, is it me, or do they manage to bring in a quarter of the Mulan cast like Ming-Na Wen, B.D. Wong, and James Hong, right? Oh yeah, like, this is definitely one of those where they really want to get in a lot, like, they really want to emphasize the Asian theme and bringing in a lot of Asian actors. Like, yeah, you got James Hong, you got Ming-Na Wen, you got B.D. Wong, uh, then, uh, of course, you also got, like, Sandra oh you got George Takei and then uh well okay that we might have one that stands out Zach Galligan <laughs> uh, but yeah like you do see that like a single like almost all the people in here are Asian so they really want so of course they really want to go and emphasize that and I mean like I don't doubt I, I do not doubt their talents at all I mean I admire the acting works of uh, Sandra Oh, Ming-Na Wen, B.D. Wong, and uh, uh, James Hong, but uh, I don't know. This might not be among their best series. I'm just putting out a warning there. Uh, let's see. The trailer honestly didn't really impress me all that much. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Gremlins movies, but I won't deny they are called favorites. But this show doesn't look that great. The animation is honestly not the best, and it feels no different than any other a Asian animated projects. So overall, I might give this a pass and stick it with the movies. Also, I'm wondering what Andre, Andre the Black Nerd would think since he is a huge Gremlins fan. Well, I think Andre actually did do, um, he actually did do a reaction video. So if you want to know his opinion, I cannot speak for him. So uh, go check out uh, Andre's YouTube channel and he'll definitely have a video on that. In fact, I, I, I'm i sure, I think I've seen, uh, he actually did post his reaction to it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Warner, uh, Warner Brothers crafted a horrific tale of a devastating force of nature and only knows destruction. But enough about David Zaslav. This just looks way too kiddie and generic for a Gremlins project. If I wanted to see a neutered version of Gremlins, I'd watch Small Soldiers. The animation looks really cheap and ugly as well. You said it best that when you when you said it looks more like a Pokemon ripoff than it does a Gremlins series, but hopefully Andre the Black Nerd Meadows will like it. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not I'm, I wouldn't go that far. You know, I don't you know, I don't think like the animation is terrible or I don't think like it looks like a complete ripoff to something else. It's just so much of it for me feels generic. It just like it does, you know, it's not going to be cringe. It's just going to be very forgettable. And that's my biggest problem. There's just nothing in here that really sells me the idea that this series is worth my time. So, like, honestly, that's just my little piece on that. Um, uh, let's see what else we have here. This look, uh, this looks how Gizmo said it best in this trailer. Uh, I'm not much of a fan of this since I'm still trying to recover from my little trauma from the movies. Uh, this show is based on. So even if it's on Max, formerly known as HBO Max, 
I'm not going to watch it. I was not expecting the voice of Mulan to be in the cast, though. And remember, kids, don't let uh, don't let it be exposed to sunlight slash bright lights. Don't let it near water. And most of all, don't feed it after midnight. Exactly. You know, you know, they're, they're, they're like trolls. You know, you don't you don't go and feed them or, or else like you're just going to cause chaos. <laughs> oh, boy. I You know, honestly, like. The, I, you know, come to think of it, like bringing the troll, bringing the gremlins back in the mo in, in the modern age, like that would actually be a great idea, especially if we put in like a social commentary on trolls on the internet, especially those who dwell on like uh, Twitter or 4chan or stuff like that. It would be a great idea, honestly. Like I would so like the more I think about it, the more I would so be down to bring back the gremlins to see how they would be in this, uh, you know, in this new age. Just not something like Secrets of the Mogwai. Oh, let's see. What else do we have here? What are the comments? Uh, even as someone who is rather unfamiliar with the Gremlins franchise, this just feels very mediocre. Uh, with its interesting, while it is interesting to see an origin story of the Mogwai, the story and characters don't seem that appealing, and the animation, while it looks nice, is rather weak. So I'm gonna wa uh, I'm not gonna watch it, and I'll just wait for Nimona instead. Yeah, I, I know how you feel. Speaking of which, did anybody get any updates on what's going on with Nimona? I feel like it's been a while now. Like they did promise that it's gonna be in 2023, but we don't know when is it gonna be in 2023. Like Netflix has given us nothing about it, so uh, I don't know. Is it like are they saving it for the summer? Are they saving it for the fall? I don't know. Like that, that's the worst thing with Netflix is that often they don't give people updates until it's like the last freaking minute. You know, like we're not going to get a trip. You know, we're not going to get one trailer from this movie until like it's going to be a month away from its release. You know, that's always the annoying part with Netflix. It's just their, their, their marketing is so convoluted and confusing and it's hard, you know, and even as like a, as a content creator like myself who does reviews and stuff like that, you know, it's hard to work with Netflix's schedule when their schedule is so like unpredictable at times. All right. Um, I think I'll go and read uh, one more comment before we move on to our grand finale. Has there been one that uh, I haven't read yet? Um, okay, I'll go with you. Uh, I am mixed about this. The animation looks pretty good, especially some scenes with Spider-Verse vibes. I like the concept of the animated series that is that has an Asian theme and uh, a prequel to the original film. Uh, it just feels annoying with the music. Uh, I just feel annoyed by the music used in the trailer. I don't know why. We will wait and see with this series if it's good or not. By the way, have you watched the trailer for the Marvels? Honestly, no, I have not yet. I was just so preoccupied with so many other things. All right, so I believe that is pretty much it with all the trailers that we have, but we do have one more story that we are going to go and cover. And uh, I have mentioned before that Secrets of the Mogwai, while it is going to be coming out on, on May 23rd, it is going to be coming soon on Max. But why did I call it just Max and not HBO Max? Well... And now, people... It is time that we are going to go and cap off this show with the grand finale. Yes, we have made it to the end of this episode with our final story. Now, you may have noticed that when I was talking about Secrets of the Mogwai, I did indeed refer to the streaming service as Max instead of HBO Max. In fact, even right at the end of the trailer, uh, after you saw the title of Gremlin Secrets of the Mogwai, the logo just came up as just Max. But why is it though? Why is it that they're removing the HBO in HBO Max? Well, that is actually because of the fact that Warner Brothers Discovery, for a while, they have been planning to go and completely reboot their own streaming service. It hasn't been going great or it has been going as well as they wanted, but they want to go. But now that it is uh, under new management after the merger with uh, the Discovery Company, now they want to go and really enhance the streaming service to really make this Warner Brothers themed streamer 
to be as like str as strong as it can be and to prove itself as a legitimate competitor that could even go up against Amazon, Disney, and Netflix. So with that said, let us discuss about Max. Yes, last week, Warner Brothers Discovery has officially revealed what they are going to do with their streaming service, and they have revealed that pretty soon they will be doing that massive rebrand of turning HBO Max into just Max. Now, we've already heard about the name uh, for a few months that they just want to get rid of the HBO Max uh, element and just call it Max. But what are going to be some of the big changes that they are going to do? What, uh, what is it that they will go and do with Max that will go and uh, debatably enhance what was previously done with HBO Max? Well, they have announced uh, a few projects or even provided some updates regarding to some of their more anticipated works that will be soon on the platform, including... Uh, the anticipated Penguin series, which is a spinoff to Matt Reeves's The Batman. But uh, one major project that they have revealed is that now they are going to go and work on a Harry Potter series. Uh, but not just that, but one that technically would go and reboot the franchise. One that would have uh, a brand new cast and one that is said to be uh, a more faithful retelling of the original books. And yes, the ever so controversial JK Rowling will be a part of this project as an executive producer, but I'll go on that a little more later. But the big thing with Max uh, that people have been talking about is regarding the price. Because as you probably know, HBO Max is one of the most expensive platforms uh, that you could go and get in terms of streaming services. Uh, even more expensive than uh, most of the others like Netflix, uh, Disney Plus, and so much more, in which uh, people would go and pay $16 a month for the platform. So, in order to go and balance that out, uh, Matt, Warner Brothers Discovery has actually revealed a new payment plan. Now, they will be keeping the regular one in which you can go and pay $16 a month. But they also have a cheaper alternative that will go for $10 a month. But the catch with that one is that, well, you're going to get ads if you will get that version of it. But at the same time, if you want more than what they would go and offer, then they do have an ultimate package. Uh, in which I'll go and uh, read you from my source here on Variety. Uh, it states here, following the launch of Max, all 4K Ultra HD content will be available only to subscribers of the new service's most expensive tier, Max Ultimate Ad Free, which is going to be $20 a month. So, And uh, right now, when it comes to HBO Max, if you do pay $16 a month, then you can already pick and choose which one, uh, which content that you want to see in 4K. Like, not everything they put up is in 4K, but there are some that would be available. But once it will be turned into Max, then the only way that you can watch content in 4K on the platform is to get the ultimate ad-free package, which will be $20 a month. Now, there have been a few things that they did reveal about it, but those were at least the main stuff that they want to go and present with their new platform, with Max. And so far, I would even say that uh, in terms of the reactions, they've not been great. They, so much so that uh, it even hurt their stocks a little bit. Not by much, but just uh, a bit of a tad where it was actually revealed that uh, apparently after the presentation that Warner Brothers Discovery has made, uh, apparently their stocks actually went down by 6%. In fact, uh, let me go and read you specifically from my source here, again, coming from Variety. Uh, it actually states here, Warner Brothers Discovery's shares were down 6%, at the close of trading Wednesday on the heels of the company's expansive presentation on its plans to overhaul the HBO Max streamer. 
Warner Brothers Discovery shares have been uh, battered over the past year as the company dealt with post-merger cuts, cost cuttings, and management realignment. On Wednesday, the stock fell 5.8% to 14.05 on what was a down day overall for the market and as a down day for most of Warner Brothers Discovery's media rivals, including Disney, Paramount Global, and Netflix. But keep in mind that when it comes to those companies, they only went down by 2 to 3%. So 6% is a little bit bigger than the rest. Uh, but anyways, um, the, Dow jo uh, the Dow Jones index fell at a modest 38.2 uh, points, while the NASDAQ dropped 102 points or 1%. The hour-long Warner Brothers Discovery presentation was held during trading hours at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Pacific time on the Warner Brothers lot in Burbank. Wall Street's verdict on WB, uh, WBD's plans is still not in, but the immediate reaction on investors indicate that the company still has a long road ahead in sorting out its profit centers in the age of streaming. So to go and uh, translate all that, what they're pretty much saying here is that the numbers went slightly down than the average with uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. They're, like Even though everybody went down, WBD went a little bit more down than others, which is pretty much an indicator that audiences and, uh, the, uh, and consumers, they're not really on board yet with WBD or they don't fully have their trust as of yet. And understandably so, because so far the things with uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, yeah, it really has been a mess. I mean, you all remember last year when, uh, we, you know, when everything has been settled with the merger with uh, Warner Brothers and with uh, Discovery. And then following afterwards, we just saw a massive purge of content, rather they be on uh, HBO Max or uh, anything like that, or, or like even employees losing their jobs and all that kind of stuff. Like it just became massively ridiculous with the way that they were managing things. and. I think it's safe to say that uh, after everything, David Zaslav is not an admirable CEO. I, I, th I think it's even debatable which one that people really hate more, Bob Chapek or David Zaslav. You know, it's kind of like a debate on which, uh, which media CEO that people seem to despise the most. So there's been all those controversies. And honestly, with the kind of damage that they have caused on that, it's going to take a long time until WBD can go and like regain the public's trust that they, you know, that they know what they're doing. That you know, to convince the public that you know that Warner Brothers Discovery is competent, that they know what they're doing, and that they will be able to go and provide some very strong content. And I mean. I'm just saying now, technically, WB is so far doing a strong job. Hold on a sec. <coughs> you know, they're doing a good job providing some content that people really are interested in, uh, including The Last of Us. There's no denying there. But uh, so far, they have been getting a lot of complications. And even in terms of uh, trying to build the future of their movies and stuff, it, it's been a very rocky road. In fact, uh, DC is a massive proof of that. Like, they're trying to fix things, especially now that uh, James Gunn and David Zaslav are in charge. But for now, though, uh, things uh, with how things are going with DC... Considering we are still technically in the Snyderverse, it's not been going well, especially with the last movies that we've seen with Black Adam and Shazam 2. And now coming soon, there's going to be uh, The Flash. Yeah, it's just causing a whole lot of problems. And just like, uh, you know, just like the Variety article stated, uh, WBD still has a long way to go until the public can really trust them in terms of providing them with uh, entertainment. But one big criticism that I just want to go and immediately say right now, the one thing that I feel like is a massive problem that I'm honestly shocked that they haven't really fixed or that they want to do anything about it is regarding the price. As I said before, uh, Warner, uh, HBO Max is one of, if not the most expensive streaming service, uh, in the, in, in the market right now. 
Like it's more expensive than Netflix. It's more expensive than Amazon. It's more expensive than Disney Plus, than Paramount Plus, than Peacock. Like HBO Max seems to be the most expensive one going at $16 a month. And what they have done here that like not only did they not change it, but the other options feel like they're just salt on an open wound. Like, let's look at the cheapest one that you can go with. $10 a month. Okay, $10 a month, it does sound reasonable, but this is $10 a month to get the platform with ads. And that, I know for a fact, is not going to be a popular option. Because in these recent times, people have grown more and more and more of a hatred towards advertisements or uh ads or any any pl any like plugs that make people want to go want you to go and sell something like you see this happening again and again and again and it's just not been work you know like it's just not been working well where at you know like companies need to find different ways in order to help people connect with their products because Ads are becoming increasingly unpopular. But imagine if you got to pay $10 a month to go and watch content with a whole bunch of ads attached to it, that becomes absolutely ridiculous, especially when you do look at the other streaming platforms and what they would go and offer. They would offer, like, not only would they go and offer so much less for the same product, but they would offer less without the ads. Like uh, Paramount Plus, for example, the last I checked, it was like $5 a month. And I don't think that's with the ads. And even if they would have, even if it, it, it is the option with the ads, I know that without the ads, it would be a lot less expensive. Or a, a, a greater example would be, um, or even with, uh, uh, not YouTube, but with, uh, with Disney Plus. The thing with Disney Plus is that they would go and char like they also have a plan where you could get it with ads or without ads, but their options are so much cheaper though. Like I think it's just eight dollars a month if you want to watch Disney Plus with ads, or you could go eleven dollars a month without the ads. Eleven dollars a month with no ads compared to Max, in which you would have to pay ten dollars a month with the ads and not just that by the way with this with disney plus you know that all the content that they would deliver is immediately in 4k with that with uh eight with max on the other hand yeah if you want if you do want to have uh if you want to have 4k content then you gotta pay ten dollars a month extra onto it which is ridiculous and uh, I hate to be that guy, but honestly, I do have to go and make a comment of in this economy, not many people are really going to look forward to those prices. And I think like that's what I feel like is going to be the true killer, because we know how inflation is becoming a true pain in the ass in our economy nowadays. And that people are still are still talking about the possibility that in our near future, we are going to see a major recession. But in all those cases, you know that people are not going to be people will have no choice but to make sacrifices in terms of their entertainment, because on streaming platforms alone, now we are seeing so many different options. And when you add and when you add all of these together, they become very, very pricey. Like now, you know, this isn't like uh, the old days where it was just Netflix or you just have a few options. Like now you got Netflix, you got Amazon, you got Disney, you got Paramount, you got uh, you got Max, you got Peacock. Like you got all those different streaming platforms all fighting to be a part of your life. And not everyone is going to have the same uh, platforms, you know? They're not going to go and purchase all the same to have everything, you know? Then we're just going to go back into cable. That That's basically what is currently happening right now. So in that regard, you're going to see people who will try to balance their budget and they're going to go and only pick and choose which ones that they can go and afford. So that would normally be like, three to four streaming platforms uh, for each household or for each person. 
And in the case of HBO Max, I could definitely see that there's going to be a significant amount of people who will sacrifice their subscription in order to save money because it's way too expensive and they get so much less for what they are paying for. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I know that with HBO Max, they got a very impressive collection and they got a whole bunch of content that are really uh, that are really worth looking forward to. But when you go and compare that to something like Disney Plus or with Netflix, in which they would offer the same services and debatably they would go and offer more in which they would also freely provide 4K, then that really does put Max in a major disadvantage. And I'll say now, if Max really wants to go and survive in this economy, if they want to survive the streaming wars, they got to put down their prices. They got to go and make something that can at least be comparable to something like either Netflix or Disney or any of the other platforms out there. Because affordability in the near future is going to become more and more of a significant factor into what people are going to go and consume. Because there's going to be a certain limit that people are going to go and they will say, okay, well, if I cannot afford this, then you know what? I'm just going to go and download it because I don't have the streaming platform yet. I want to watch it. So I'm going to go and pirate it for free. That is what people are going to do. And because of the streaming wars, piracy is becoming more and more of a popular thing. Yeah, back then, like there was no use for it, you know, like, you know, you know, we went back to the mentality of, oh, piracy is wrong. You shouldn't do piracy. But nowadays, especially with like how, you know, with inflation and with so many different streaming platforms, piracy is becoming more and more of a reasonable, uh, a reasonable excuse to go and watch content. So that's honestly how I am feeling right now. And not to mention like the controversies that would go and surround Warner Brothers Discovery. And even in terms of like the whole presentation with Max and what they are trying to introduce, like already things are going pretty badly there, especially with the introduction of the Harry Potter series, with the fact that they're trying to make an entire Harry Potter show that's going to be based on the books and that they're trying to be more faithful. And especially with the fact that JK Rowling is still going to be involved. And they and Warner Brothers uh, WBD was asked about the transphobia aspect with JK Rowling. And man, they tried to dodge it. Like whatever questions they were asked about the controversies with JK Rowling, with how she would promote transphobia, what is their stance on uh, trans rights and stuff. They tried to avoid that thing like the plague. Like they don't want anything to do with it and they just want to focus with working on JK Rowling in order to go and make uh, in order to go and make this show come to life. Which honestly, like I'm just going to quickly comment that I am really not surprised that WBD would still be down to collaborate with JK Rowling. I mean, here's the thing. If WBD has spent months, years even, on trying to on trying to defend a convicted felon like Ezra Miller so that they could go and promote the Flash movie because they've already spent millions of dollars on that thing, then it's for sure that they're going to go and side with J.K. Rowling. No problem. So that, that that's honestly my little piece on that. So it's not surprising. And yeah, on that factor alone, yeah, Warner Brothers Discovery should be ashamed of that, but they don't have, but keep in mind, WBD doesn't have any moral standards. They are purely in it for the money. And as long as Harry Potter can still make money, they're still going to collaborate with JK Rowling. So overall, though, honestly, it does make the future of Max feel pretty bleak. And like I said before, if they're not going to go and change things up, like if, if they're not going to change things up in terms of their attitude with their moral standards and stuff like that, at the very least, if they cannot change their prices for max, then they're then I can imagine in the future that this is going to bite them in the butt. They are going to be screwed with those prices. And even though as a Canadian myself, I cannot get max, uh, I cannot go and, and, uh, actually get the platform but if i were you know if i were in the u.s i don't know if i would consider max in my options of what platform uh what platforms to have because max would just be way too expensive 
So with that said now, uh, I will go into the chat wall and uh, I would like to go and say, uh, what do you all think about the whole Max situation? Uh, if you have HBO Max, are you thinking of keeping your, your streaming service? Uh, are you considering to get Max when it does get rebooted? Let me know what you all think on that. Uh, let's see now. I can't say that this presentation was terrible, but it was nowhere near great. I'm sure they will deliver with a good amount of new content on the streaming service, but I don't get both the extremely ridiculous prices and the fact that the HBO, uh, HBO name was removed. I'm still probably going to get Max uh, for the content, considering there is still a lot of great stuff there, but, it, uh, but it's got a long way to go to be a legitimate competitor in the streaming age. All right, fair enough. And yeah, that's another major problem. Like, why get rid of the HBO name, considering that HBO is uh, synonymous with quality? In fact, like some of the greatest shows in recent years are associated with uh, HBO Max, not just uh, The Last of Us, but even stuff like, uh, you know, Game of Thrones, Barry, and so much more. Like, it, it kind of feels weird that you're kind of getting rid of of like the big brand name that is the most appealing about your platform and just go with Max. You know, it's kind of like if Disney Plus decided to get rid of Disney and just name their platform Plus. It, it's kind of the equivalent of that. All right, uh, let's see. I'm sorry, uh, but did the team behind Max think up with a better idea of a name like Warner Max or Warner Discovery instead of Max? But hey, we have to deal with it. Uh, when I was watching the presentation, the more I seen uh, how the whole service would work, the more that I'm questioning if I should spend $20 a month on the content that they are offering, even if the Penguin and The Last of Us looks really good. I'm not, re I'm not ready for the Hellfire when Harry Potter is released, especially with the, with the attacks on the new cast. Oh yeah, th that's going to be a dumpster fire. I think at th I think it is safe to say, especially from what we have seen uh, earlier this year with Hogwarts Legacy, like if you talk about Harry Potter, that's already going to that's already going to going to open up a, a can of worms right there. Like that's just asking to get in trouble. Like there are very few things in this world that you could do that is so easy to find yourself in controversy than to just talk about Harry Potter. Uh, let's see. This is another dumb decision that WBD has done uh, this time towards a streaming service. Changing HBO Max to Max sounds stupid, and it is almost an insult to get rid of the HBO brand despite HBO still being around in, produ in producing content. Plus, the, uh, the charge prices are just too dang expensive, given that I still have the platform, but I might cancel uh, when it comes out. I know they have some good content and want to see the Penguin show next year, but I can't afford it with the controversies and price changes. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's one thing that I do want to add is that for any newcomers... Uh, it's going to be hard for them to like jump in because of that price. Like I understand for those who already have it that, you know, they, you know, they would feel comfortable with keeping it, but for any, you know, for anyone outside of that, that's going to be WBD's biggest challenge to convince people to go and subscribe to max, especially if they want to keep that price. Like if you, if you're going to pay me or if I'm going to pay it $16 a month, then there better be a damn good reason for it. And not just for a few content that I want to watch. I'm just saying. Uh, let's see. Fantastic idea getting rid of the HBO part of HBO Max, David. I mean, when has the name HBO ever been associated with quality programming? Clearly just calling your premier streaming service Max and making the pricing plan laughably absurd will make way more people want to sign up for it. Honestly, though, if someone told me that David Zaslav was a double agent sent by Disney to destroy Warner Brothers from the inside, I would believe them without a second. Oh my god. What a godforsaken conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh boy, but honestly, I don't blame you. That kind of does sound credible. All right, I think I only have um, one more that I'll get down to. One more comment to go and read. 
Ah, yes, Warner Brothers Discovery, Animat's favorite punching bag of 2022. The name change has done nothing but give HBO Max even less of an identity when calling it Warner Max instead of when it was, uh, when that thing was right there. Uh, the prices are still pretty ridiculous, and their Harry Potter reboot with J.K. Rowling is a whole nother story that I would rather avoid touching. At this point, David Zaslav needs to be blacklisted from the entertainment industry. Well, I mean, that is, well, the only way he would be blacklisted would be when he is out of Warner Brothers Discovery. Once he is out of there, he's not going to be coming back in the entertainment, uh, uh, the entertainment industry because, oh boy, his reputation uh, was very much burned. And with that said, that should do it for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. Thank you all for joining me on this. And also, I just want to quickly go and say that if you want to go and follow me or if you want to join more of my craziness on this podcast, then all you have to do is just subscribe to my Twitch channel, Animat Live, or on the Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast YouTube channel. And also, don't forget to go and follow me on whatever podcast service you have, rather it be Google Play, Amazon, uh, Spotify, or iTunes. So with all that said and done, I would like to say thank you all so much for joining me on this. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, see you later, dudes.